mistake, but that's okay, we can fix it. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our channel, Immortal News. Today we'll be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away with announcements of their passing made in the last 24 hours. As always, we have special tributes in our today's top headline section. Before we proceed, we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's begin. Thank you. Number 8. Celebrated for transforming fitness into a vibrant spectacle that captivated the nation, Richard Simmons was the flamboyant force behind the revolutionary workout series, Sweatin' to the Oldies. His Beverly Hills exercise studio restaurant attracted celebrities such as Barbara Streisand and Paul Newman, making fitness fashionable and accessible. Born Milton Teagle Simmons on July 12, 1948 in New Orleans, Simmons soared to fame with his infectious charisma and unwavering commitment to helping others achieve their weight loss goals. His own battle with obesity fueled a lifelong crusade against the condition, inspiring millions with his energetic aerobic videos that combined exercise with entertainment. Simmons's approach went beyond mere weight loss. It was about enhancing vitality and self-esteem. His television shows and fitness programs emphasized the mental health benefits of regular exercise, promoting a message of self-love and positivity. As a fixture in living rooms across America, he fostered a deep personal connection with his audience, encouraging them with his signature blend of humor and empathy. Beyond the screen, Simmons was a prolific author and speaker, his books and speeches echoing his message of health and happiness. He was particularly passionate about advocating for those struggling with their weight, often sharing his own vulnerabilities to help others feel less alone in their journey. Richard Simmons passed away at his Los Angeles home at the age of 76. Despite his passing, Simmons's legacy endures through the joyful movement he championed and the lives he touched. He transformed the fitness industry, turning the pursuit of health into a communal celebration of life. His innovative spirit and compassionate approach left an everlasting mark on the fitness world and popular culture. His life's work continues to inspire those on their wellness journeys, making him a beloved figure in the story of American fitness. Tributes to Richard Simmons Number 7. Renowned for revolutionizing how Americans approach sex education, Ruth Westheimer, popularly known as Dr. Ruth, dispelled myths and offered straightforward advice with her candid, no-nonsense dialogue on radio and television. This approach made her a household name and a pivotal figure in the American sexual revolution. Born on June 4, 1928 in Frankfurt, Germany, Westheimer's journey to fame began with her escape from Nazi Germany leading her to eventually settle in the United States where she pursued her education fervently. Dr. Ruth earned a master's degree in sociology from the New School and a doctorate in education from Columbia Teachers College in 1970. Her academic pursuits laid the groundwork for her lifelong commitment to informed sexual discourse. She became an American citizen and began her career at Planned Parenthood, which sparked her interest in sex therapy. This interest led her to study under Dr. Helen Singer Kaplan at Cornell University Medical College, further honing her expertise. Westheimer's career as a media personality took off with her radio show, Sexually Speaking, in 1980. The show's success catapulted her into the television arena where she became a beloved figure, known for her straightforward discussions enriched with humor and intelligence. She made frequent appearances on shows like Late Night with David Letterman, and The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson, and was featured in major publications like Playboy and People magazine. Dr. Ruth authored several books including Sex for Dummies and Heavenly Sex, which further solidified her status as America's favorite sex therapist. She remained active in public speaking and media appearances well into her 90s, continuously advocating for comprehensive sex education and open dialogue about sexual health. Ruth Westheimer passed away peacefully at her home in New York City at the age of 96. 
her legacy endures through the vast array of educational materials she produced and the ongoing efforts of those she inspired. Her work continues to influence the field of sex therapy and education, ensuring that her pioneering spirit will resonate for generations to come. Tributes to Ruth Westheimer. Number 6. Renowned for his pioneering work in video art, Bill Viola transformed the landscape of modern visual arts with his profound explorations of human experiences like birth, death, and consciousness. Viola, born on January 25, 1951 in Queens, New York, developed a deep connection with the visual medium early in life, a passion that shaped his path from his academic roots at Syracuse University to becoming an icon in the art world. Viola's career took a significant turn in the 1970s when he worked in Florence, Italy, where he was exposed to influential video artists. This period was crucial in defining his style and focus. His journey continued in the U.S., where he contributed to the evolution of video as a powerful form of expression at the WNET 13 Television Laboratory in New York. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, Viola's travels and residencies, including a transformative stay in Japan, deeply influenced his creative output, integrating elements of Zen Buddhism into his work. His marriage to Kira Perov, who later became an integral collaborator, marked a lifelong partnership that greatly impacted his artistic direction. Viola's work is celebrated for integrating sophisticated electronic technologies with his profound narratives. His pieces like The Passing and The Reflecting Pool are exemplary in their technical depth and emotional resonance. In 1995, his contributions were recognized on the international stage when he represented the U.S. at the 46th Venice Biennale, solidifying his status in the art world. Viola's later works continued to draw on spiritual themes, often reflecting on the internal states of the human psyche, which he portrayed through groundbreaking uses of slow motion and immersive soundscapes. Bill Viola passed away in Long Beach, California at the age of 73, after a battle with Alzheimer's disease. His legacy endures in the art community and beyond, characterized by a career that spanned over four decades, marked by relentless innovation and deep introspection. His works remain vital in discussions on life's ephemeral and profound nature, ensuring his influence will resonate in the broader community for years to come. Tributes to Bill Viola Number 5. Renowned for his perseverance and dedication to bodybuilding, Danny Broadhurst was a rising star within the competitive bodybuilding circuit. Born on April 5, 1992 in San Diego, California, Danny pursued his passion for the sport with unrivaled commitment, working tirelessly towards earning his IFBB Pro card. Despite facing significant setbacks, including a severe injury in 2022 that left him with multiple broken bones and torn ligaments, his resolve never wavered. Danny's recovery and subsequent return to competition were testimonials to his fierce determination and resilience. A respected coach and mentor, Danny shared his extensive knowledge and passion for fitness with others, deeply impacting many aspiring athletes. His recent engagement marked a personal high point, reflecting his joyous personal life amidst his professional rigor. Tragically, Danny's journey was cut short, and he passed away at the age of 32, just as he continued to reach new heights in his career. The bodybuilding community has come together to honor his legacy, reflecting on the profound influence he had on the sport and the lives of those he touched. His passing is a stark reminder of the pressures faced by athletes at the highest levels of competition. Danny Broadhurst's legacy will live on through the lives he touched, both in and out of the gym. Tributes to Danny Broadhurst
Number 4. Renowned for his profound influence on Australian broadcasting, Ronnie Sparks was a luminary whose voice defined an era in radio. Sparks began his storied career in regional radio before ascending to stardom in Sydney in the 1970s. Known for his engaging interviews and charismatic presence, he quickly became a beloved figure on stations such as 2SM and later 2UW. Ronnie Sparks, born on March 4, 1952, in Brisbane, Queensland, captured hearts with his rich voice and genuine rapport with listeners. His career was marked by notable achievements, including pivotal roles at Sydney's top-rated FM stations, Triple M, and Two Day FM. Beyond radio, he was a celebrated voiceover artist for television, contributing to programs like Wheel of Fortune and hosting special broadcasts such as Rocktober on ABC TV's Countdown. Sparks's career, however, was not without challenges. He famously took a stand against workplace smoking at Two Day FM, a move that led to his controversial dismissal but also highlighted his commitment to principles over conformity. This incident briefly displaced him from the airwaves until he was swiftly welcomed at Nova 969 and later WSFM, where he gracefully concluded his broadcasting career. Living in Camray with his family, Sparks enjoyed a fulfilling personal life alongside his professional endeavors. He passed away at the age of 72, leaving behind a legacy of integrity and passion for broadcasting. Tributes to Ronnie Sparks. Number 3. Renowned for her captivating blend of fantasy and historical narratives, Tonki Dracht emerged as a pioneering figure in children's literature. Her profound influence began with her seminal work, The Letter for the King, which not only won the best youth book of the latter half of the 20th century, but also became a cultural cornerstone that transcended generations. Born on November 12, 1930, in Indonesia, Drax's early experiences in the lush landscapes of the Dutch East Indies deeply influenced her literary backdrops. Despite the harsh realities of her internment during World War II, she cultivated a rich inner world of stories and drawings, a testament to the resilience that would define both her character and career. After relocating to the Netherlands post-war, Drax pursued her passion for art and storytelling, graduating from the Academy of Visual Arts in The Hague, while her initial career as an art teacher allowed her to inspire young minds. It was her unique storytelling during these teaching sessions that laid the groundwork for her future as an author. Drax's works often featured young protagonists on quests of self-discovery, intertwining elements of legend with personal growth. Her ability to blend the fantastical with the historical set her apart in a literary landscape dominated by more conventional children's stories. This innovative approach not only captivated Dutch readers but also gained international acclaim, with her books translated into several languages, including English. Tonka Dracht passed away at the age of 93. Her legacy, however, continues to inspire new generations through adaptations of her work, including films and a Netflix series, ensuring her stories endure in the pantheon of children's literature. Tributes to Tonka Dracht. Number 2. Renowned for her groundbreaking contributions to molecular biology and her influential role in science policy, Maxine Singer reshaped our understanding of genetics and championed ethical scientific conduct. Her seminal research on deciphering the genetic code and her leadership in addressing the ethical dimensions of recombinant DNA technology have left an everlasting mark on science. Born on February 15, 1931, in New York City, Singer's academic journey led her from Midwood High School in Brooklyn to a transformative education in chemistry and biology at Swarthmore College. She furthered her expertise at Yale University, earning a PhD in biochemistry, which set the stage for a distinguished career at the National Institutes of Health. At the NIH, Singer's pioneering work with Leon Heppel, 
provided crucial insights into the enzymatic processes that assemble nucleic acids, aiding Marshall Nirenberg's team in cracking the genetic code. This work was instrumental in the synthesis of RNA that would later be pivotal in the biochemical mapping of amino acids to their corresponding codons, a cornerstone of genetic translation. Throughout the 1970s and beyond, Singer's career was characterized by her dual focus on advanced research and public advocacy for responsible science. As a leader, she organized the seminal 1975 Asilomar Conference, which developed essential guidelines for recombinant DNA research highlighting her commitment to scientific integrity. Her presidency at the Carnegie Institution of Washington from 1988 to 2002 underscored her leadership in fostering scientific research and education. Singer was a visionary in science education, initiating programs like First Light to enhance early science education in Washington, D.C. Singer's contributions were recognized with numerous awards, including the National Medal of Science for her scientific achievements and societal concerns. And she was the first woman to receive the Vannevar Bush Award. Maxine Singer passed away at the age of 93. Her legacy continues through her profound impact on molecular biology, her ethical leadership in science policy, and her advocacy for women in science. Tributes to Maxine Singer. What's Trending on the Internet? News 1. In a tragic incident early Saturday morning on Chicago's South Side, a 63-year-old man lost his life after being hit by an unidentified vehicle. The accident occurred around 6.11 a.m. in the South Emerald Avenue in the Roseland neighborhood. Emergency responders who arrived at the scene confirmed that the man had sustained severe trauma and was pronounced dead at the location. As of now, no suspects have been taken into custody in connection with the hit and run. Chicago Police Department's area detectives have taken charge of the investigation, striving to uncover the circumstances of the crash and to locate the driver responsible for the fatal incident. The community and law enforcement are urging anyone with information to come forward to assist in resolving this heartbreaking case. News 2 In a tragic incident in Springfield, Illinois, Sonia Massey, 36, was fatally shot during a deputy-involved response to a Prowler report at her residence. Dispatched at 12.50 a.m., Sangamon County Sheriff's Office deputies encountered a situation that escalated, resulting in Massey being shot at approximately 1.21 a.m. Despite immediate first aid provided by the deputies and subsequent emergency medical services, Massey was pronounced dead at St. John's Hospital. The Illinois State Police have taken over the investigation, emphasizing a thorough and transparent inquiry in coordination with the Sangamon County State's Attorney's Office. The community and Massey's family, represented by civil rights attorney Ben Crump, are calling for the release of body camera footage to clarify the events that led to this devastating outcome. Protests demanding justice and accountability have ensued, highlighting the community's unrest and desire for transparency. This case continues to unfold as authorities work to provide answers and ensure a fair investigation process. News 3. Rick Messina, a cherished employee at El Conquistador Golf in Oro Valley, Arizona, tragically passed away following a bee attack while performing his duties on the golf course. The incident occurred on Monday, June 24, as Messina was mowing near the Poosh Ridge course and was swarmed by bees. Despite immediate medical attention, he succumbed to his injuries and was pronounced deceased on Thursday, June 27. Messina, 57, was renowned for his exceptional work ethic and positive attitude, characteristics that resonated deeply with both his colleagues and club members. Following the incident, a thorough inspection by beekeepers revealed no hives on the property, suggesting a random attack by a traveling swarm. To honor his memory and support his family, the community has rallied to complete a serenity garden Messina was passionately working on, ensuring his vision lives on. Additionally, a GoFundMe campaign has been established to assist his elderly parents during this challenging time. 
his devotion to his work and the joy he brought to the golf course will be profoundly missed by all who knew him. News 4 A tragic event unfolded on the southern slopes of Mount Etna as a 55-year-old American tourist passed away during an excursion, according to Italy's Alpine Rescue Service. The man, whose name has not been released, suffered a sudden illness while exploring one of Europe's most active volcanoes. Despite immediate efforts by rescue teams and an air ambulance, attempts to revive him proved futile, and he was declared deceased at the scene. The exact cause of the tourist's illness remains unclear. However, rescue officials caution that the combination of high temperatures and humidity on the mountain can pose serious risks, especially to those unaccustomed to such conditions. On the day of the incident, temperatures on Mount Etna hovered between 25 and 28 degrees Celsius, 77 to 82 Fahrenheit. The man was found in a remote area, emphasizing the dangers of the terrain and the swift changes in weather that can occur at high altitudes. Alfio Ferrara, a spokesman for the Alpine Rescue Service, advised that tourists should be aware of the risks associated with sudden altitude changes and extreme weather conditions, especially when transitioning from lowland areas such as beaches to higher elevations. This incident serves as a somber reminder of the unpredictable nature of outdoor adventures and the importance of preparation and caution. News 5. In a dramatic turn of events, Alec Baldwin's trial for involuntary manslaughter was abruptly dismissed by a judge due to serious procedural issues. Baldwin, age 66, faced charges over the tragic shooting of cinematographer Helena Hutchins on the set of the film Rust in 2021. The dismissal followed revelations that the prosecution may have withheld critical evidence regarding the ammunition involved, leading to questions about fairness in the proceedings. The case's dismissal, which cannot be refiled, marks a significant moment in Hollywood's ongoing discourse on safety and responsibility on film sets. Baldwin's legal team successfully argued that the withheld evidence compromised the trial's integrity, ultimately leading to the judge's decision to end the case with prejudice. This legal outcome not only clears Baldwin of potential prison time but also sets a precedent for how evidence must be handled transparently to ensure justice. The incident has already prompted calls for enhanced safety measures in the industry to prevent similar tragedies. Number 1. Renowned for his tireless advocacy for the rights of nuclear test veterans, Ken McGinley's dedication to justice transformed the lives of those exposed to nuclear radiation during military service. His efforts to secure recognition and compensation for these veterans marked him as a pivotal figure in the history of military and nuclear accountability. Born on March 4, 1939, in Johnstone, Renfrewshire, Ken's early life in a working-class family shaped his resilient and compassionate nature. At 18, he enlisted in the Royal Engineers and was subsequently present at five British and American nuclear bomb tests on Christmas Island in 1958. These experiences, which had profound health repercussions, catalyzed his lifelong mission. Ken's military career was cut short by health issues attributed to radiation exposure, leading to his medical discharge at 21. Undeterred, he pursued a career in bookkeeping, but his past experiences on Christmas Island continued to haunt him and his comrades, spurring him into action. In 1983, Ken founded the British Nuclear Test Veterans Association, aiming to highlight the sacrifices and suffering of soldiers like himself. He led the association until 2002, spearheading campaigns and gathering crucial data to support the veterans' cases for recognition and restitution. Despite facing setbacks, including a significant legal defeat in the European Court of Human Rights, Ken's advocacy brought considerable attention to the veterans' plight. Beyond his direct campaigning, Ken engaged with political and civic leaders globally, sharing his message with figures such as Ronald Reagan and contributing to international discussions on nuclear safety and veteran rights. His work earned him the title of Hibakusha from the Japanese Congress, an honor typically reserved for survivors of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings, underscoring his impact in the broader narrative of nuclear survival. Ken's personal life was marked by love and commitment to his family. He married Alice Mead in 1960, and together they adopted their daughter, Louise, enriching their lives through shared experiences and enduring support for each other. Ken McGinley passed away at the age of 85. His legacy continues through the ongoing work of the organizations he inspired and the many lives he touched. His efforts not only provided a voice for the voiceless, but also highlighted the broader consequences of nuclear engagement 
leaving an everlasting mark on both national and international levels. Tributes to Ken McGinley. Renowned for her vivid portrayals on television and theater, 